So I think that to your point, bringing together those hosts with larger, more professional operators, giving them both access to information and resources just elevates the, the industry as a whole and stops the finger pointing that can be mm -hmm. happening on both sides. Exactly. And then, as you said, on the emerging countries side of things, we've seen it a lot too. We do a lot of business internationally, and it's very interesting to see how behind some of these countries are in terms of technology adoption. And you wonder why. And, and I think yeah. uh, the cost side of it is certainly something, yeah. even on the currency side. Some of these yeah. countries, they, they get money in their local currency and the exchange rates when now you're looking at paying the most sophisticated PMS from the US, it, it's it's completely, it cannot yeah. be done, right? It just doesn't yeah. work. So I love that you're building that aspect. And I think there's a lot of opportunities there. Now, what if we go back to sort of your experience in, in all angles of this industry, as well as talking with so many property managers, so many operators, professionals in this space, what would you say is a common mistake that you see? Let's talk about property managers, property management companies. What's a common mistake that if you could prevent someone from making it earlier on, you would say, hey, watch out for this. I know you haven't gotten to it yet, but but Annie has seen it either either yeah. on your <laughs> end or, or from others. Like what's what's a what's a mistake worth avoiding at all costs that property managers make a lot? Yeah, I think one that's overlooked and I just have experience and I still see it, which I'm surprised, is managers that think that they're the only player in their market. So therefore they don't engage in their market. And so like mm. knowing your market and being the expert in your market is so important, but also being friends with like Lino Maldonado said it is co-opetition. Be cooperative and collaborative, but they're still your competition. It's like keep your friends close, your enemies closer type thing. You have to know who they are and you have to cheer them on. And it's not about undercutting them or trying to steal their business. Sure, if you're doing everything right, you're going to get the business. You'll, you'll win in the end. But I think a lot of people don't think about the fact that the more they are engaged in their local community and engage with their competitors, the better off they're going to be. Because again, there's going to be a situation where Joe's rentals down the road gets an owner and it's not the right fit for their company. So they're going to want to refer it out to somebody else. And they're going to want to mm. know if they refer it out to somebody else, is it going to come back to bite them or is it going to be something that's going to be good? So the more you talk with your cohort and your market, the better off you're going to be. So I, I think that that's just one thing outside of like just business operations and technology that, that, that there are still people that overlook the importance of being friends with your being frenemies. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, no, there's a lot of synergies that can be built, collaboration, opportunities that can come up and learning at the very least. So I think that makes a lot of sense. What about a mistake that people are still making? What about something that you do or you have seen property managers do successfully, but that just not a lot of people follow or you wish more people we're following like what's one thing or whatever it might be mindset that you think if more property managers adopted they'd be more successful i think it goes back to what we talked about a little while ago was the the scarcity mindset like if you're constantly in the scarcity mindset you're doing things very reactive and you're not thinking about the bigger picture and and focusing on what you can manage this is a giant business there's abundance out there for everybody there's plenty of business out there now yes there's going to be people that say but there's only so many rentals in my market sure i get that but if you operate in a space of like i've got to have it all and nobody else can have it i don't want to root the business on i want to just root my business on that mindset I think it becomes almost like a cancer within your business and your team starts to adopt it. And then people start to do and act in ways that they shouldn't act. I would say as far as like managers that are doing really good things that I'm seeing more of, but when they started doing it, I, I, there wasn't much of it is Lauren Madewell. It's Annie Bellum's cabin rentals up in Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. She just got out there and started again going back to authenticity she was just like we live in a, a quirky destination there's a lot of weird little history things in the market and she started not making fun of it but highlighting them as part of what the market was and what her business was and 
it just became very charming and it became something that if you go to Gatlinburg and you want a fun place to stay, you're going to choose Antebellums. There's several great managers in the market, so don't get me wrong, but I think that she just really leaned into the quirkiness and the folklore of her market and it just became like the underlying part of what her brand is. So yes, Antebellums is a cabin rental company. It's been around for many years. It's a family owned business. The charm that she was able to take from the quirkiness of the market has just catapulted her like to a whole nother level in terms of what people see. And I think what managers could be in other markets, just own it and enjoy it and capitalize on it. Like she's done a great job with that. Nice. Nice. I like that. I like that. That's mm -hmm. actually a pretty interesting concept. So what's unique about my market and rather than hide it or anything else like this, let's embrace it and let's talk about it. I love it. And when it comes to that mindset, you, you talked about a book earlier. I think it was, you, you mentioned Deepak uh, Chopra. Chopra, I, yeah. I can, I, I can pronounce it correctly. Like, like a lot of <laughs> words that I cannot pronounce correctly. But so you seem to be into this personal development space from just the fact that you read something from him and also I see some books in, in your shelf behind. So mm -hmm. oh, what, yeah. would be, what would be a book that you would say has had the most impact or influence on your personal life? And, oh my and gosh, you have to look why? at... Whatever comes to mind. Uh, I, you know, it's really the Deepak Chopra one because that one has just stuck with me and I read it so long ago. And interestingly enough, a lot of the book was way over my head because he's talking metaphysical things, scientific stuff that is just way above my comprehension. But he broke down just like what we are as humans and our purpose, that we're part of this larger universe and how we interact with it and how what you give is what you get. And it took me a while to really truly understand that. If you're going to continue to give out negativity and you're going to be always coming from a place, again, that scarcity mindset, but coming from a place of defense, then you're always going to mm -hmm. have to be on defense. And it helped me get through some challenging times in my own personal life because I had to think, step back and say, do I want to be in this place of negativity or do I want to try to find the sunny side of it? Yes, there's days when you can't find the sunny side for sure. But if you have mm. more days that are sunny than not, then the, the universe rewards you in kind. And how have you gone about trying to find the sun when it's just cloudy and messy and there's just problems left and right and all you can see is problems? Like, How have you managed to stick your head above and see things from another perspective? Like, What has worked for you in terms of changing your mindset in those moments? <laughs> Honestly, like I take a walk, like I connect with nature. I do yoga. You have to remove yourself from the situation to gain perspective and realize that if you look back at the situation, if today is a bad day, look at it and say, is this the worst day I've ever had? Probably not. And I made it through my, my worst day. So if you can make it through the worst days, then bad days are easier to get through. It's just a matter of perspective. And so I try to do that. It's hard. And I think that everybody's challenged with that. But I think that that's why I love this business so much. For the most part, the vast majority of people that I encounter are of the same mindset. It's like this too shall pass. We'll get through it. And if you make sure that you have a tribe of people around you that you can go and just word vomit on them, everything that's in your head, and they're not going to judge you for it. And they're going to be supportive of you and say like, we're here with you. We're going to hold your hand. We're going to get you through it. That's really important too. But you also have to be thinking that you're the master of your destiny and you can control your mindset. And the more you mm -hmm. can look at the sunny side of it and then try to think, realize that it's not going to be the end of the world. And what we do mm -hmm. in this business is not saving the world. It's not curing cancer. It's not life changing, but it's important and we do good things and tomorrow will be better than today if it's a bad day. Mm -hmm. This too shall pass. I really like that. Exactly. Uh, I, yeah. I think that they talk a lot about it in, in stoicism. And so mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would just add to that the concept of externals, like really differentiating what are things you can control and what are things yep. that you cannot and understanding that there's nothing that can be done on, on the externals, on things that you cannot control. And so focusing on the things that you can control, I think yeah. it comes from that stoic wisdom. Awesome, yeah. Annie. Well, this has been super fun. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for sharing all, all those insights and sharing your story with us today. Any final thoughts of insight that you'd like to share with 
operators, with property managers, uh, or if not, where can people stay in touch with you? Um, I don't have any thoughts of wisdom. It just goes back to your mindset and how you handle things. And just, I love this business and I appreciate you asking me to come talk with you. It's a, it's, it's great. And I love your podcast. I love that you're doing this. It's so cool to see other people doing this because sometimes it feels, it can feel very alone when you're just talking to people through a video, but there's a whole other network of people out there doing what you're doing. But if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'm always on LinkedIn. I'm very active there. They can reach out to me there or they can reach me at annie.holcomb at nextpacks.com. Awesome. Thanks so much, Annie, for your time. And hopefully I'll see you soon at another event. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.